Hi, I am continuing my talk on media optimization. We have already analyzed the uh, five methods, uh, five more need to be discussed. So next method is placket Berman design. placket Berman design is invented by Robin Plackett and the J.P. Bergen in 1946 uh, and it's a statistical experimental design method. In one factor at a time, which is the best method, we are studying individual all effect of all parameters and its interactions. But the difficulty is that there should, should be, there need a huge number of experiment. Maybe we need to do a thousand experiment or ten thousand experiment or more to get the best media. And which is expensive and time consuming. So placket berman method is a replacement for or a solution for the problems of the one factor, uh, this factorial design. As it is a statistical method, we don't have to do large number of experiments, still we are getting the data. It's actually, the placket berman method is actually a screening method. It is not a, it is not going to give the optimum medium, but it is going to tell you which are the most critical factors. So maybe in a, oh, parameters, we, if you are looking at a industrial fermentation, you may, may have a hundred different parameters need to be optimized. But all of these parameters may not have an effect on the fermentation. Some of these parameters are just neutral. Or we already know, if you know the microorganism, you know the incubation temperature. In the literature, you will get the incubation temperature. You know the optimum pH. Or the amount of agitation you can fix. So, so many of these factors we already know. Or some factors we have an understanding or we may not change. And some of these factors may be something like a, the iron concentration or the growth factors or the amount of vitamins or amino acid may not have an effect on the media. The thing is that some of the parameters have a huge impact on yield and other parameters don't have that much huge impact, that much impact. It may not affect, it's like neutral or even if we are investing a good amount to change that parameters, we are not getting that much of yield. So this design, black and Berman design, is used to sort out which are the most important parameters and which are not. So out of 100 parameters, if you use this design, it will tell you which are the most important parameters, which are the key parameters. If you change the key parameters, you will get a huge change in the yield. So that's what this Blackard Berman say. So at the end of the Blackard Berman, you will get different parameters which will be ranked in the order of importance the first one will have the is will be the most important factor and the the based on the importance it will be ranked uh, in the black environment design as i say it's a statistical experimental design it use balanced the incomplete logs uh, so as using it if you want to evaluate the effect of n parameters you need to do only n plus one experiment if you want to if you want to optimize 11 parameters, you need to do 12 experiment. If you want to do 40, like 39 different parameters, you need to only do only 40 experiment. So plus one. If you have 10 parameters, you have to do only 11 experiment. Just like that. For n parameters, you have to do only n plus one experiment. So let me show you one of the experiments we have done as a part of the project work. Uh, in this project, we want to know what are the factors which are affecting the alcohol production by the uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. The medium was basically the waste product of the ice cream industry. Your seniors has done it. So we have pointed out few of the parameters. We are not jumping into 100 parameters. We are just want to focus on most important parameters. So here we have 11 different parameters which may have an effect on uh, the uh, production of alcohol. So these are pH, inoculum size and these whole things are there. In black and Berman design you cannot use, it's not a quantitative analysis. You cannot say which pH is best. From 2 to 8 you cannot say which one it is. Design wouldn't say which one is the best. But we, what we can do whether the low level or high level is better. So as it is Escherichia uh, coli, sorry, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, the literature say uh, its best pH is something around 4 or 5. So in this design, we used two different levels, 4 and 5. 4 is the minus level, 5 is the plus level. 
the inoculum size zero and one zero means we are just putting a little bit of inoculum using the uh, wire loop uh, level one means we are putting actually one ml of inoculum so that's a huge amount then if you look at the maltose we want to know what is the effect of maltose in the alcohol production if you we have zero level we are not adding any maltose but at high level we are adding one gram of maltose into the media uh, same with the peptone uh, in the minus level we are not adding any peptone in the plus level we are adding two grams of peptone so in the black and perman the there is only two different levels either minus or plus then once we use this uh, levels uh, for the statistical design what they give the design basically we have used a software to create the black and perman design so they give something like this we have 11 uh, parameters they ask us to do 12 experiment so in this case in the first experiment everything is plus so if you look at this table the ph2 ethyl acetate everything is kept at the plus level in the second one they want x1 the variable one at minus so that means ph should be 4 uh, then x2 at the plus so which means inoculum will be 1 ml then dilution ratio minus dilution ratio should be 0 agitation plus that means agitation is 120 rp so like that uh, like they want to do a experiment in this fashion then third experiment should be in this fashion so after the experiment we will get the values uh, these are the different levels we have written these are the pattern the pattern is actually the upside down i think so uh, this is a full plus one and they ask us to do the experiment in different combinations this is shows at what level we are doing things after the experiment we got different values and we put this value back into the system so they have done the statistical analysis and we got this so after the statistical analysis what it say is that ph which is the most critical variable so out of this 11 variables the most critical variable is ph and it has a positive impact on the production if you are using 4 ph you will get a less production but if you are getting using a 5 ph plus ph you will get a better production second important variable is sucrose if you are not adding any sucrose you will get only less ethyl alcohol uh, if you are adding sucrose it has a very high positive impact on the production but if you look at the ethyl acetate it has a negative impact adding ethyl acetate is bad it is better to not to add the ethyl acetate then mgso4 so like this we have the para we know which one is the critical variable which one is not a critical variable we don't have to worry about pepton because it is a waste product of we think after result we realize that the uh, medium is a waste product of ice cream industry ice cream is basically made up of milk products so milk is having good amount of protein so the waste may also have some amount of protein so we don't have to add extra pepton into the medium inoculum size is not affecting yeast extract which is also a nitrogen source which is not affecting that much so by getting this design using this design we understand that these are the critical factors so in the next step we will focus only on uh, the first two, three or four critical parameters then we will look at which ph is better as we know 5 ph is better but whether 4.8 4.9 5.0 5.1 5.2 5.3 .5 what is the exact ph uh, that cannot be found using this bracket bourbon design but we can use other studies to find the exact ph or the exact sucrose if you want to find the exact uh, value exact quantity of every factors it is very difficult but if you want to if you know which one is the critical factor you can actually optimize that factors very easily so it is suitable for when we are using five independent parameters or more uh, and generally we use two levels plus and minus low and or high and uh, for any experiment uh, we should uh, for n parameters we need to do n plus one experiment uh, the thing is that n plus one experiment should be a multiple of four you cannot do 10 experiment it should be 12 or 60 or 20 40 or 80 things like that the multiple of four the statistical design support the model support only uh, multiples of four in some cases you may only have 10 variables you don't have uh, 11 uh, so if we have n variables the n plus one experiment need to be done if you have 11 variable n 11 plus 1 12 so that's possible that's a multiple of four 
so in some cases that may not happen so what we do we put a dummy variable dummy variable uh, is just a dummy or maybe a factor which doesn't have a effect on your uh, effect on your yield uh, and you should be very sure about it and dummy variable also help us to estimate the variable variance if you the whole result say that dummy variable has a positive or negative impact on your uh, production uh, that means something is wrong with your experiment there is a variation is high so we always use dummy variables in the experiments uh, another fact, fact thing is that uh, co-founding confounding confounding is in pv design uh, do not distinguish between effect and interaction that's a downside there may be interaction maybe we are getting a better results because we are using it in some combinations that cannot be distinguished in uh, bracket bottom design otherwise it's a better design because we don't have to do much of the experiments uh, by using only few experiment we can get we can identify which are the most critical factors next we have response surface methodology generally we do response surface methodology after we are dying, doing the bracket bottom design in the bracket bottom design we we will find what are the most important variables and in which quantities it should be used that is uh, done using uh arsum response surface methodology it was introduced, introduced by box and wilson it's a statistical experimental design just like the bracket berman it find the relationship between several independent variable and one or more dependent variable it's actually optimizing the quantity what is exact ph what should be the quantity of the uh, carbon source you know how much amount of nitrogen source you need to add that's what the response surface methodology say uh, it uh, actually determine the interaction among the different compounds using statistical technique it it, uh, it is able to study the interaction between different compounds uh, in the response response in this uh, methodology means yield how much yield we are getting that's what the statistically say response and these methods are not only used for in the bioprocess technology it is also used in, in all other type of industries any type of process so response is actually the yield uh, and we are actually we are getting this response because we are changing some of the parameters so uh, we are changing the parameters we are getting the response or the we are uh, getting the response as the change in yield it identify and optimize parameters at levels of maximum yield as i say it's a quantitative method we are quantitatively changing the parameters uh, it use a sequence of designed experiment just like the bracket bottom design once we put in the values what are the what are the different levels at which you want to analyze the system will generate uh, some of the experimental designs and we are supposed to do the, that experiment and uh, put it the, after doing the experiment we will get the yield and we need to put the yield value into the back into the system then they will say which one is better and which one is bad so generally we need to do only very small amount of experiments uh, when compared to the factorial design we don't have to do uh, that much number of experiment once we have the values of the experiment they will make a plot and a statistical model uh, by using this model we can actually predict which combination of this components are the are performing best for the yield so once we made it we can actually predict what, what yield we will get uh, this is an example of the surf, uh, response surface methodology uh, so this is actually a three dimensional graph uh, with the productivity in the y axis and you can see culture time and temperature so the relationship between the culture time temperature and productivity is shown here so if you are using a combination of temperature and culture of this amount we will get the maximum productivity if you are uh, where temperature is low and the culture time is also low you will getting least productivity so like that if you using high temperature along with the low ph you will get the productivity of this level so like that we can actually produce the uh, this surf response surface methodology design uh, for quantitative uh, optimization of the medium next we have evolutionary operation it is actually a factorial design which is doing seriously in a series uh, like uh, as i said the factorial design doing the factorial design is very difficult so in evolutionary operation what we do instead of doing a complete factorial design we are applying the factorial design to two or three factors at one time 
once we've done it we will get a better media and we are selecting few other factors in the next round so serially we will improve the media that's what the evolution design do each time we are changing the factors we are analyzing factors for one time and the next time we will select another two three factors next time we will take another two two three factors so it's actually a multivariable sequential search technique multivariable we are changing to two or more variables at one time uh, then we are doing it sequentially we are doing again and again in different time we are using different variables so it's called a multivariable sequential search technique uh, effect of factors is studied and response is analyzed statistically it's basically a statistical method uh, so following experiments are conducted based on the response so once we get the best one uh, experiment result of one experiment we'll actually uh, able to say what experiment you need to do next so if you are changing a one carbon source and which is proved to be wrong which is if that is decreasing the yield you can actually replace the, that carbon source with another one in the next set of experiment sorry or if you are getting a better result in, with a nitrogen source you can actually carry over that nitrogen source to the next experiment so things like that can be done then the use of artificial neural networks it is just the ai artificial intelligence application you might have studied the artificial intelligence or artificial neural network uh, it is the network which is made artificially which is connecting uh, which working is similar to our brain it's actually basically a mathematical model so just like any ai interface we need to train it so we are plugging in putting in so many experimental data which is available with the, with us so we may get in experimental data from the internet may the publications maybe books so we are putting in all the information we know uh, to this neural network and it's actually a training process once it is trained it can actually predict uh, the changes so uh, in this cases uh, different media composition different types of bacteria relationship between the bacteria everything we will feed into the system the artificial ai system uh, once the system is used to it what we will do if you introducing a new carbon source and its composition the system is able to say uh, how it will be performing and it is also uh, going to say how much amount how much in what combination you should use it so that's the basic ai application the figure shows uh, the use of ai for lis in production so we have different parameters we are putting it in so the interaction among all these parameters is studied by the ai system then the optimal production uh, method is uh, provided finally we have the fuzzy logic which is actually a mathematical application uh, um, i think it's more than a statistical application uh, so in fuzzy logic uh, we actually define the fuzzy membership first so in this definition uh, just like the bracket bourbon design uh, we are actually uh, defining the fuzzy membership and levels of component in a fermentation is also given to the system so it's a binary system we can say either low or high and as per the uh, fuzzy membership uh, definition the system will generate a set of experiment and we are supposed to do that experiment and once we done the experiment the yield of each set of experiment need to be uh, put back into the fuzzy system so after conducting experiment the cells are entered in the fuzzy membership once the system is get used to this uh, statistical ideas uh, the result and the experimental design uh, thing the fuzzy logic is actually able to predict which is the best so instead of giving instruction to the system it is able to predict which should be the best system which type of carbon source need to be used which temperature will be the better so all the system even if it is fuzzy logic or the artificial intelligence it's extend the application of the information technology and if you are putting more and more data into the system if you are training our artificial neural network with a huge amount of information the prediction will be more accurate if you are feeding it only with limited information or incorrect information you will get uh, worse results so it's always depending on the type of data we are feeding in so these are all the system which can be used for the optimization of system uh, optimization of the fermentation media and parameters thank you so much for listening